There's never too much heaven when it comes to the Bee Gees, who dominated the 1960s and 70s and became the leading name in disco. But today, most of the musical geniuses who put us under that night fever are gone. Only Barry Gibb remains. And his life has certainly been a roller coaster. From his fairy tale marriage to the near tragedy that threatened to crumble the life he built. Welcome, I am your host, Nostalgic Nick, with the inside details on the last BG, Barry Gibb. I'd like to elaborate on you, Linda, and what happened in Doctor Who's TARDIS. <laughs> Including the childhood accident that changed his life forever. He was in hospital for three months. He was very, very ill. He never spoke till he was three years old and the incredible tracks that no one knew were written by him. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that thumbs up icon to show your support and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a new deep dive. But now without further ado, let's go dancing down memory lane with Barry Gibb. How much older was Barry Gibb than Andy Gibb? Family in general, and brotherhood specifically, would be an inspiring but sometimes damaging theme for Barry and his siblings. He, like the others, came from a big musical background. His father was a drummer and a band leader. And I wanted to be a pop star. And my brother said, oh, could we do that too? And I said, yeah, let's do it together. For a time, it was just Barry, and then his younger brothers, the twins, Maurice and Robin, were born. Just three years separated them, but a dozen years were between Barry and his little bro, Andy. But they're all babies to the older sister, Leslie. Now, Barry's childhood was defined by the family moving around a lot. It made it kind of difficult to plant roots. But even this whirlwind living condition was nothing compared to the horrific accident that Barry suffered when he was very young. When Barry was two years old, his mom was making tea, and she set the boiling hot pot on the table. That's when Barry climbed up, and it was enough to knock the pot over and spill the scalding hot liquid onto the toddler. If there's one thing to know about burn damage, even from hot water, it can be disastrous and very deep reaching. Barry was rushed to the hospital, and even though he was where he needed to be, medicine just wasn't what it is today. The incident was so traumatic, Barry had spots of no memory. But he does remember, quote, Then the gangrene set in, because in those days, the advancement of medicine simply didn't apply to people with bad skulls. So you didn't have skin grafts, you didn't have things like that. But this was a particularly bad scald. Barry would need two years of hospital care until he fully healed. And even the recovery was fuzzy, he says, quote, the incredible thing for me is that whole two years is wiped from my memory, the whole period of being in the hospital. The idea of being burnt is in there somewhere, but I have no knowledge of it. I've got the scars, but I have no knowledge. Barry does say that he came out of that near-death experience, because it was near death, with a very new appreciation for life, especially music. He called his new revelation, quote, an instinct about music, about life, about everything. Is Linda Gray still married to Barry Gibb? Everything happened early to Barry Gibb. He learned just how fleeting life painfully is when he was very young. He began to figure out the messy business of playing in a band as a teen, and when he was just 19, he got married to Maureen Bates. The year 1966, and around that time, Barry was getting a taste for musical success. But that same upward momentum did not carry into the marriage. The young husband stayed with his wife for just a while before they split up in 1970. But that year wasn't all breakups and heartaches. Rewind a bit to 1967, and Barry found himself in London to tape BBC's Top of the Pops, basically a British music chart program showing off the best-selling records of that week. And that's when he crossed paths with former Miss Edinburgh, the lovely Linda Gray. Barry recalled, quote, She was the hostess for one week. The week Massachusetts was number one. And she'd never heard of it. We just saw each other across the room and something happened. And they said, oh, he's coming over. He asked me if I'd like to go for a cup of tea. They apparently took things to second or third base on the set of Doctor Who, in the set of a magical phone booth. Barry was under her spell. He remembered, quote, 
When we first saw each other, I thought it was love at first sight. I thought then, that is the woman I am going to spend the rest of my life with. They actually got married in 1970, the same year he finalized his divorce with Marine. And yeah, there is an awful lot of overlap in that timeline. But he was right when he said they would be lifelong partners. In fact, they got married on September 1st, Barry's birthday. Jump ahead over five decades and they are still going strong, celebrating their 50th anniversary in 2020. Why did the Gibb brothers not get along? If you or someone you know has siblings, you know the famous rivalries that can sprout up and the delicate balance brothers have to try and respect or just stomp all over intentionally. And that was very much the case for the Bee Gees, just multiply that to a global fame kind of scale. In the recording studio, sound engineer John Merchant called the brothers, quote, world champions of sniping at each other. I don't know, we were in a bubble, you know? You're in it, but you can't see it. And so you're, you're in the eye of a storm. In the book, Bee Gees, Children of the World, pop historian Bob Stanley added, quote, John reckoned the spats were part of the work process. They know what the other was capable of and would not rest until their brother had delivered. The dust settled, but barely, because all around them, their lives were changing. Barry said, quote, we became famous and that became a real powerful element in our lives. It became a competition, the sibling rivalry and all those things. Because success creates that and you're not the same anymore. Barry, of course, was the clear winner in the attention competition, a feeling that their manager, Robert Stigwood, just exacerbated, to the point that Robin just flat out left. As far as Barry was concerned, quote, Before we ever became famous were the best times of our lives. I remember lots of intense arguments, not speaking to each other for weeks, and then coming back together again. He did insist that it never stopped them from being brothers, but being brothers also means knowing just what wrong buttons to press. He also credits his wife for keeping him on the straight and narrow, saying, quote, My brothers had to deal with their demons, but I was married to a lady who wasn't going to have it. I could bring drugs into the house, but they would end up down the toilet. She never allowed me to go in that direction. I had to deal with my brothers being pretty much out there, but I was lucky. And the Bee Gees had some grisly battles with addiction. In an effort to brute force a huge turnaround, Barry tried some tough talk with Maurice. This was back in 2003, but a few days after, he died. It was a crushing loss, and the remaining brothers did not come together. In fact, roughly 10 years after Maurice died, Barry said he and Robin weren't really speaking. And completely unbeknownst to Barry, Robin was also sick, with cancer no less. Barry had no idea until Robin died in 2012. So Robin didn't even tell you until... No. No and being kept in the dark would leave him completely heartbroken and quite confused. So, the eldest brother found himself reading a eulogy at his little brother's funeral. In it, he celebrated the parts of Robin he did realize didn't get the spotlight they deserved. Only then did he finally see that Robin and Maurice did not get quite the same spotlight that he did. In his tribute, he issued advice to everyone else. He said, quote, If there is conflict in your lives, get rid of it. Today, Barry Gibb is doing just that and talks about his losses with a level tone. Though even he has to stop and marvel at being the very last BG left. Heck, the guys collaborated with Dolly Parton, Kenny Rogers, and Celine Dion, many of whom he has written incredible songs for. In fact, if you love Heartbreaker, Woman in Love, Immortality, or Islands in the Stream, yep, congratulations, you love a song he wrote. Do you have a favorite cover? of one of your songs? Yeah, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? Al Green. Al Green. Even today, there is no getting away from that BG sound. And Barry Gibb was a driving force behind the music that defined an era. One that still gets the foot tapping and the head bobbing today. 
But behind every note was tension, ready to boil over sometimes, like it did when he was just two. But Barry Gibb turned his own hang-ups into a learning opportunity for himself and anyone who would listen. His philosophy is, quote, What I discovered over the years is if you don't have failure, you can't have success. Because every time you fail, you learn something. The mission is to keep the music alive, regardless of us, regardless of me. One day, like my brothers, I will no longer be around, and I want the music to last. So I'm going to play it, no matter what. Man, Barry Gibb, thank you for the music. But now we need to hear from you all, so get in the comments and tell us what is your favorite Bee Gees song. Did you listen to any of their solo work? Did you like the Bee Gees or hate the Bee Gees? What about Andy Gibb, who enjoyed him? Get in the comments and tell us all things Barry Gibb and all things Bee Gees. If you enjoyed our video today, please hit that thumbs up icon to show your support. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss a memory. But most importantly, from all of us here at Do You Remember, thank you so much for watching.